Hello everyone, Jelani here from MWL Tutoring and welcome to my channel that is dedicated to helping you improve and succeed at CXC Math. Now in today's video, we're going to be looking at completing the square. We're going to look at every aspect of it. We're going to look at what does this mean? We're going to look at why do we do it? And most importantly, we're going to look at how do we do it? So let's not waste any more time. Let's start one time. Completing the square is the process of changing the way our quadratic equation looks. And if you watched my earlier videos on quadratics, you'd be aware that there is this form of the quadratic equation. It's called the general form. The general form of the quadratic. And it looks something like this. It looks like ax squared plus bx plus c and if we work in with equations we would usually put it equal to zero now i did a whole lot of explanation on this general form in past videos so i'll put a link to them if you need to see them but for now we'll just stick with this general form here that like we saw earlier on and what completing the square is well it's all about converting from this general form to what we call the completed square form and the completed square form looks something like this a open brackets x plus h close brackets squared plus k and we could sort of shift this around as well because when we're dealing with equations we also want this to equal to zero so the whole idea of completing the square is about moving from the general form to the completed square form now the next question is well why is this important why do we need to do it well if we're looking at things around the csec syllabus and so on if we want to just um, do it very simply here why do we need to complete the square well there are a few main reasons it allows us to get certain things about our quadratic or about our parabola graph so one it allows us to find the coordinates of our maximum or minimum point it's the first thing it allows us to do it. it it gives us the exact coordinates of the maximum or minimum point which we'll look at later on two it allows us to find the equation of the axis of symmetry again we'll look at this later on in the video and three the last thing is that it allows us to solve for the roots so yes we have a third way of finding the roots which we talked about in our last video a third way of finding the roots for a quadratic which is by completing the square so now that we know what the completed square form is about and why we need to calculate it let's start to look at how we're gonna calculate it and to do that what I'm gonna do I'm gonna jump onto a new page here and right now you're seeing on your on your screen here you see now blue square a blue square and a red rectangle and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a visual representation to explain how to complete the square so again this is just explaining how we do it we'll get down to exactly how we do it with the numbers and everything like that later on at the end but this is gonna explain the process so let's consider an example of a quadratic and it's gonna look something like this let's consider x squared plus bx 
And what we want to do is we want to convert this math language here. The, num the, the letters and the squared and all those things. We want to convert this into the diagram format. So x squared, well, if we take if we say for our blue square that the sides of our square is x units long, well then we have x at the top here, we have x here, and the area of our square is x squared. So the blue square represents x squared. And for the red rectangle, how we get it to represent bx is well we say what about the width of this rectangle here? If we call the width here B, and if we look at the length, the length is the exact same as the X, so it's also X here, then the area of our red rectangle is B, X. And if we join the two shapes together, like how we have them there, then we essentially are adding them up. So that converts this mathematical notation into diagram notation. And this diagram, like I said, is this diagram is the shape of a rectangle. And the method that we do in here is called completing the square. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this rectangular diagram into a square. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna split our red rectangle in half. So I'm gonna draw a little dotted line here coming down the center of the rectangle that's cutting it in half and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one half of this red rectangle and we're gonna sort of move it and put it to lie down just underneath the x squared square and you'll see what that looks like in the next slide so let me jump across to the next slide and there you have it notice the width here is much shorter than in this last one because we cut it in half and we took half of it and we put it to lie down just underneath the x squared square or the blue square so let me just write back in some dimensions here so we have x x and now instead of b because we split our red rectangle in half the width is now b over 2 or a half of B. Let's let's write it as a half of B. One half B. And we could write it here as well. One half B. And if we look at what we have here, we have essentially a square. It's just this one little piece here that is missing, right? This one little piece that is missing here. But we have a square. And what we could now do is we could find the area of this square. And the area of this square would be the length, which is x plus a half b on this side here. And because it's a square, it's going to be the same length here, x plus a half b. And we're going to square this to find the area of the square. So the area here will be x plus one half b squared but the small bit of trouble that we run into is this little piece here that i was talking about that was not included right this little piece remember i could erase this it was just an empty little gap here but our area formula includes it our area formula includes it but we don't need it because it's not included in the diagram so what we're gonna do is we're gonna after we found the area of the square we're gonna subtract the area of this small little square here because we don't need it and if we look at the dimensions of the square its length is a half b and of course the area of that will be one half b squared and this right here so let me put this in a little long it's got a container it here this is how we complete our square and this may be a little bit confusing but let's throw it into an example and see what it's all about 
So let's say we have an example here and our example wants us to complete the square. For let's have a full on quadratic how we've been seeing them in previous videos and how you probably are accustomed to seeing them. So let's say they want us to complete something like x squared plus 2x minus 3 equal to 0. And before we even started, let's jump back to what I was doing with the diagram so we could just see what we compare in our example to, to what the explanation was. So the explanation was only x squared plus bx. Now b could be any number, right? This was just the general example. But in our actual example here, notice we have this extra minus 3. So what we're going to do to answer this question to complete the square? For the moment, we're just going to pretend that this minus 3 is just tagging along in every line of working that we have until we reach the end. And we're just going to focus on what we saw in the first explanation, which was the x squared plus bx. And in this case, bx is 2x this time around. And what we're going to do is this. We're going to... Let me erase it. We're going to take our last slide here with our little formula of how we complete the square. And we're just going to implement it x plus a half b squared let's jump across and see what that looks like again remember we only looking at this piece here for the while so x plus a half b squared will be x plus one half our b is two and we're gonna square it and we jump back again to see the rest of the formula we minus a half b squared again so we minus one half b is two one half two and we square this and like i said we're just gonna pretend that the minus three is just tagging along until the very end of the question and we're gonna keep working it out so a half of two is simply one so we have x plus one squared minus a half of two is again one minus one and one squared is one minus three equal to zero and now we're just gonna join the minus three and the minus one together and we get x plus one squared minus four equal to zero and that is it there we've successfully completed the square and we've converted the general form in white here all the way down to this completed square form in blue so there you have it that was our, my video on the complete guide to completing the square i'm gonna release a later video with a whole lot of examples of how to actually do this we, we're gonna drill examples in my next video so if you're interested in that stick around for it but with that being said this brings an end to the video here um, if you found it useful or helpful or anything like that, you know, you could leave the video a like to show support. And if you want to look, look forward to more videos like these, you could consider subscribing to my page. Um, that way you could just keep up to date and you'll know when I'm bringing out the videos so you'll be able to keep up with them a little more. And yeah, so once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.